the Maghar Oryx. We finally see what the racials are. And I wanted to kind of wait until we see the main meat of Maghar racials on the table. But now we can actually see what the racial for Maghar Oryx are. So in this video, I want to take a look at the ability of Ancestral Call as well as other racials and analyze them in a PvP or a PvE model to give you guys a little bit of my ideas if I think these guys will be strong in World of Warcraft BFA. Let's start with some of their less important racials. Sympathetic Vigor is an interesting, very unique racial that I don't think will be all that strong, but you guys let me know in the comments below if you think otherwise. Sympathetic Vigor increases your pet's health by 10%. If you are somebody who plays a Beastmaster or Hunter as a Magical Orc and you like to solo content, then I think this is the only time this racial will be useful. As I can't really imagine a Shaman utilizing their Wolves with 10% more health or a Magical Priest, which will be one of their classes, that will use a Voidling pet and give it 10% more health. I don't really know how that will help. So this seems like very, very, very Hunter-esque of a racial. It doesn't really do anything for you either. In PvP and PvE situations, nobody really hits your pet, so your pet having more health doesn't really do anything. Again, it just feels like a Beast Mastery Hunter oriented racial for soloing content. I don't think it will have any impacts in PvP or PvE. Moving on is Savage Blood, which is actually a very strong racial in my opinion. Reduces the duration of poisons, diseases, and curses by 10%. For the healer, it won't really be that much unless there's some kind of crazy AoE, disease, poison, and curse effects going out. And for DPS in PvE content, this won't be amazing either. But for tanks, this will be great. For PvP, however, this actually opens a whole other criteria of how you can play your character. There's plenty of poisons with rogues and hunters getting a lot of poison-based abilities back. Diseases are still something that Unholy and Fast DKs roll. And curses are everywhere, from warlocks to shaman hexes. To be able to sit a hex 10% less of a duration is actually a pretty strong ratio. I feel like this could have some uses in PvP, some passive uses. And I feel like if a lot of people are playing assassination rogues, death knights, shamans, and warlocks with all their curse effects, diseases, and poisons, then Maka or is yet a lot stronger. This seems like a very passive effect. I think this will be strong for DPS and healers. It is very, very niche, very, very unique. But if you start seeing a lot of rest of shamans, LA shamans, and enhancement shamans in the game, and there's a lot of curses going out and you're a healer, I think going for Magha Orc, passively reducing those curses by 10% is actually a pretty solid racial. Overall, this is kind of unique, kind of niche. I think this is actually not that bad of an option if you're somebody who PvPs. Open Skies increases mount speed by 10%. We actually get to see the movement speed of this ability. We thought it was going to be 2%. But 10% is actually kind of competitive. Now you don't have to be a Paladin or you don't have to be a Death Knight in order to have that extra movement speed in Battlegrounds. Now you can mount up and catch that Berserker buff and be just as competitive as Paladins and DKs unless Death Knights and Paladins have faster movement speed than that. I also wonder if this movement speed will work for flying as well. It says mount speed, it doesn't say flying mount speed, but this could apply for flying mounts. We won't know until we get some testing in the alpha. Overall, I think this is a great racial for anybody who wants to level. And if you're leveling as a Magkar hunter, in particular, this is great for leveling. This also utilizes and allows you to use a little bit more mobility in places where you can use a mount, like BGs. So you could technically get from place to place a little bit faster. Overall, not a bad racial, it's a pretty decent utility. Now let's talk about the big racial Ancestral Call. This one is very similar uh, with the racial of the Orcs, the original racial that gives them attack power and spell power. This one instead grants you the power of Ancestors, increasing random secondary stat by 102 for 12 seconds. Now it says by 102, but that is the numbers in BFA. So if you try to compare them with the numbers for Legion, I think it's almost safe to say that those numbers would be almost match up or maybe kind of equal to the racial for the orcs. As the orc racial, in a way, if you think of it from a rogue perspective, gives you agility. Now, is agility a strong stat for you? Most people say it is, but in Legion with how secondary stats work, I would rather have a thousand of haste or a thousand of versatility, hell, even a thousand of critical strike instead of a thousand of agility. Primary stats are not nearly as strong, but for orc racial is just not a terrible racial. It's okay. 
But the macro racial is, it has a bit of a caveat. It has RNG to it, increases a random secondary stat by one or two. And as somebody who plays Outlaw Rogue, this doesn't stop me whatsoever. I will take this racial over the Orc racial. For a healer, I think this is where you would find every single one of the secondary stats useful, except maybe for mastery. For some classes, mastery is a lot more important, for others, mastery is a lot less important. But haste allows you to cast spells faster, crit allows your uh, spells to crit a lot more, maybe have a chance for it. I will still take the odds. Versatility increases your healing and increases how much damage you can take. So all four of those stats, or at least three out of the four, are actually useful. And the mastery can have uses, unless you're a monk or any of the classes that don't really utilize their mastery. So for healers, this is great. For DPS in PvP and PvE, if you're somebody who utilizes every stat, then you're in a good spot. If you're somebody who is like a rogue, then as an assassination rogue, you might actually use the stat fully. Versatility will increase the damage of your abilities by a percentage. The critical strike will let you crit more, which means more combo point building. Mastery will increase the damage of your poisons and bleeds, and haste will increase how fast your poisons and bleeds tick or how many times they tick during their duration so for assassination rogues and specific specs like this you can actually find a class race spec combo that can utilize all four of the stats into your burst in any way shape or form some of them being major some of them being minor if secondary stats continue to be strong in bfa then macro orcs i think will in some cases on damage alone could overtake the normal orc racials but with the changes in BFA, if it really comes down back to base stats like agility, intellect, and strength, then the macro orc will still be a powerful racial in PvP and PvE, but maybe not nearly as powerful as the normal orc racial. I guess time will tell. But overall, these guys seem great. I love what they've done for the racials. I really like what they, these guys ended up being. I like all the extra flavor stuff like open skies and savage blood. Sympathetic Vigor, I'm still not sure about, but let me know in the comments what are your thoughts or how would you utilize any of these racials for a race class combination and what macro orc race class combination are you thinking of making once BFA comes out. I am thinking of making a priest just because I've always wanted to see what's it like for a macro orc to be a priest, shadow, holy, or discipline. And the idea of an orc priest, I just cannot, I, I just cannot imagine in my head, so I want to see it for myself. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see all of you guys in another video.